This is Sharon Beck from Brandman University, and I would like to talk to you today about my stakeholder education plan for my mindfulness eating research project. This is Sharon Beck from Brandman University, and I would like to talk to you today about my stakeholder education plan for my mindfulness eating research project. Obesity is a problem in the United States that is growing. Two-thirds of the adult population are classified as overweight or obese. If nothing changes, the current generation of children today may not have lifespans that are as long as the lifespans of their parents. Obesity has been shown to increase risk for many health problems including diabetes, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, dyslipidemia, sleep apnea, arthritis, gallbladder disease, liver disease, depression, and anxiety. Decreasing caloric intake and increasing exercise have proven to result in weight loss, but less than 5% of the people who manage to lose weight can sustain the loss for five years or more. Patients with mental illnesses are at an even higher risk of weight gain. People on psychotropic drugs frequently have increased appetite and carbohydrate cravings as well as reduced physical activity. Finding new ways to deal with the problem of weight loss, particularly in patients using psychotropic medications, is crucial. One of the solutions beginning to be offered in the literature for patients with weight gain is the use of various forms of mindfulness for weight loss. Mindfulness meditation has been used for centuries to self-regulate. It has a long history and has been shown in many studies to improve self-regulation. Mindfulness can be defined in many ways. It has been described as non-judgmentally attending to the present moment while monitoring reactivity by John Kabat-Zinn. It is a practice that enhances and promotes awareness of bodily sensations and decreases reactivity to the outside world. Mindfulness practices have been shown to help control responses in many diseases such as substance abuse, depression, chronic pain, stress management, and self-injurious behavior. I will be seeking the answer to the research question, does in a group of women on psychotropic drugs who have gained 20 or more pounds, does a group therapy experience using a mindfulness eating intervention in addition to diet and exercise cause the participants to lose more weight than st standard diet and exercise? The mindfulness intervention will be based on a nine-week course called Conscious Living, Living Mindful Eating by Jan Chosen Bays. I found as I've contemplated my project that there are three groups of stakeholders that I would like to talk about. One is the private practice in which I, um, I was a co-founder and have been working for 20 years, Summit Clinical Services. The second are the group, the MDs and other providers in the community that around me. And third are the patients themselves. And I'm going to take each group, describe them a bit, talk about the educational model I would use to plan my intervention, and then the intervention itself. Summit Clinical Services was, begin, was begun in 1993. There was Six providers when the practice began. Now there are 15 with three and one half full time equivalent office staff. When the practice was founded, the original six providers analyzed the current practice models that existed at the time. Most of the models that were found were based on top down vertical leadership that involved a practice owner employing other providers, making all decisions for the practice, and obtaining all the profit. The six owners of the new practice envisioned a place where all providers would be responsible for the financial and administrative aspects of the practice and can jointly share the profits from the practice based on the percentage each provider brought into the practice each year. No one provider would own the practice. Instead, all of us would be owners. Each provider would market himself, though a marketing committee would also market each new provider as they joined the practice. The philosophy of the practice has always been to provide the best possible practice and service to each individual and group of patients that choose us as their provider and to spend time collaborating on cases that include multiple providers. The educational model that fits my um, 
person in my private practice at Summit Best is that of Communities of Practice, which was developed in 1991 by Lave and Wenger. And this particular uh, theory talks about when, peop when uh, people with a common interest in an area collaborate over an extended period of time, sharing ideas, strategies, and innovation, they become a community of practice. And this is a way that people are influenced and um, affect each other. There are three requirements for a community practice. One is a shared domain of interest, which of course is the practice of psychotherapy. Number two is a community that helps each other learn and learns from each other on some form of regular basis, though not necessarily daily. And third, practitioners, practitioners are similar, have similar training, um, that, and then they can help each other share and develop ways of being together and uh, in implementing new ideas. And all three of those fit the summit clinical model. In order to gauge this particular group of stakeholders, I have developed a PowerPoint that I will show them that will incorporate a number of um, uh, points and issues to discuss. I have included seven points in this particular PowerPoint that I really want my stakeholders to understand as I um, try to engage them in my project. The first one is the problem of metabolic syndrome. So I'll discuss, you know, how uh, this is an area that really has been poorly addressed. A description of three or four um, studies that have been done that show that mindfulness is useful in weight loss. A description of the study that I plan to do myself, that it will be a nine-week study based on Jan Chosen Bay's uh, conscious living mindful eating. Um, I will describe the importance of the project to the practice, that it could actually be a marketing tool eventually for another product line if this research is successful, that it won't demand very much time or energy from our office staff, which are already pretty heavily worked, that the practice change required will involve the MDs weighing patients at the beginning of the uh, treatment in the initial evaluation, also at the one month and the three month mark, and I will let them know that they can help me with recruitment. The second group of stakeholders that I am going to try to engage will be community providers. And these are people in the community who are somehow impacted by um, metabolic syndrome or patients who are non-compliant with medications. Our area in DuPage County in Illinois is absolutely dense with providers in family practice, internal medicine, psychiatry, there are community clinics, there's a board of health. So I will have probably upwards of 200 possible practices that I could garner patients from for my study. The educational model that I found that I believe fits best for this second stakeholder group is the ARC model of motivational design. And there are four aspects to this particular educational model. The first one is attention. You need to do something to grab the attention of this type, this group of providers, because they're going to be getting so much literature and they're inundated with information. So I need to do something interesting and different. I need to show that this particular, my intervention will be relevant to them. I need to instill confidence in them in the way that I plan to proceed. And I need to um, find ways to uh, show that this intervention will help them feel satisfied. So for this group of stakeholders, I will design a brochure that I will send out with a number of letters, and there are various things that I will uh, let you know that I will include on this brochure. On my extremely engaging brochure, I will have a description of the problem I will be studying, the research and at least a few of the studies that uh, people can look up if they're interested, the population that I'm studying, and the fact that I'm hoping that this study may provide some assistance with the problem of non-compliance for medication that cause people to gain weight. I will request that the um, providers help me with recruitment if they are able, and I will explain my educational preparation that I'm not only in a doctoral program, but that I will have taken two courses on mindfulness before doing this training. 
My final group of stakeholders will be the patients that are recruited themselves. The educational theory that I will be using for this group of stakeholders, the patients, is Maslow's hierarchy. And I know everyone is familiar with Maslow's hierarchy. What I will be uh, aware of and trying to work with is that health is part of safety and security, which is the very second level of Maslow's hierarchy. I have a specific education plan also for my participants. I will let them know that the group will meet weekly for nine weeks and it will be very important to be there every week. That there will be labs taken, blood work done at the beginning of before the uh, intervention and midway and at the three month mark that there um, is a time commitment outside the group that includes the practicing, the exercising and practicing mindfulness as well as the diet, that there will be no cost for this important uh, intervention, but there will be incentives throughout the way to keep people involved, that their privacy will be protected and the results will be kept confidential with, unless they give me a release of information. Success at last? Well, it is really too early to tell. If I have powerfully engaged my stakeholders, my chances of success will be much higher.